So as a community, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put us on this earth, and we're going to be interacting with each other, did he give us rules or guidelines at the things we should do and the things we shouldn't do? The answer is yes. The chapter in the Quran called chapter the rooms, the hujurat, compartments, and it's actually called the chapter of conduct. And one of the ones that I want to share with everybody and all of us have felt it, have felt pain and hurt because of it, is when someone feel ill about you or me. I didn't do it. I didn't say it for that reason, but someone took it negatively, let alone when someone talks about me or you in a negative way. And absolutely it is not in me, or even if it is in me. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have said? Ya ayuha ladhina aman, jtanibu kathiran min al-dhan, inna ba'd al-dhan is believers. And every time in the Quran, when you hear the word, ya ayuha ladhina amanu, O believer, O believers, O you who believed, remember one thing, give it your full attention, listen. This is what Allah is saying to you and me, listen. Like, what does he want from me? O believers, اجتنبوا كثيرا من الظن The first order between me and everybody, everybody with everybody. Stay away from suspicion. Don't feel or think ill of somebody else. إن بعض الظن إثم Some of this suspicion is actually a sin. ولا يغتب بعضكم بعضا Do not backbite each other. And then he gives the parable. أيحب أحدكم Question mark. And there is no answer. Do you really want to eat the flesh of your dead brother? And then Allah says, and then, so what should, and then, be Allah conscious. In Allah, verily Allah is always accept repentance and He is all merciful. There is moral conduct in the Quran shaping the feeling of the people. How do they behave toward each other? How should I behave toward another person and vice versa? We have to guarantee that everybody, every human being, Muslims and non-Muslims, have rights, integrity, value their presence. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he specifically said two things, is suspicion and backbiting. And the Rasul taught us this. How about if I think they are doing this. I don't have a proof. He said, If you are suspecting or you have the feeling of suspicion, don't. Tuhakkak meaning don't investigate. Don't interrogate. Leave it. If it's true, Allah will show me. Allah will bring it to me. But I don't want to go and spy because that's usually would lead to spy. And that's another thing Allah says, Wala One related to the other. It's, it's connected in the same verse. Don't spy on each other. Don't pick up the phone of somebody and see what they are saying in their text messages. We can do that. Human beings has rights. But the most important one in this verse next is Do not backbite. What is the definition of backbiting? Mentioning your brother or sister, something they don't like when they are not there if they heard it. And the Rasul was asked the usual question, how about if it's true? They, they did that or they said that or what I described them is, is true. He said, subhanAllah, faqad ikhtabta. Then you have backbite. What? And how about if it was not there, that's buhtan, that's slander, which has a punishment detailed in the Quran. And any time you see a parable in the Quran, that means Allah wants to explain it more and wants to bring my attention to a phenomena that either is going to make it clearer or it's going to make it more beloved or the opposite. And in here, the parable in a question form, do you really want to eat the flesh of your brother? Immediately Allah says, Fakari to go. You don't like it. Who wants to do that? And Rasul as he was coming back from a graveyard after putting someone in the grave, and there were two people behind him saying something negative about the dead person. As he was walking, and exactly this verse, 
there was on the side of the road a dead animal. He looked at them and says, go and eat from it. And they said, Ya Rasulullah, eat from it. And you know what he said? You already did. Subhanallah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me, I call it the medicine. How do I not do that? It's becoming so norm, so common. Everybody, Muslims and non-Muslims. And then sometimes shaitan comes to us to justify it and say, what did I say? And Allah says then, what Be Allah conscious. If these thoughts comes to me, that Allah is hearing me, Allah is seeing me, then I'm not going to say it. And number one. Number two, if I apply the hadith of Rasulullah sallam, None of you will reach the real level of faith unless he or she loves to the, her sister or he loves to his brother what he loves for himself or she loves for herself. If I put myself in that shoes, will I be happy if someone said this about me? The answer will be no. Allah. Be Allah conscious. Even be afraid of Allah and hold your tongue. And the Rasulullah also taught us Whomsoever believe in Allah and the day of judgment, let them say something good or stay quiet. How about if I did it? How about Allah knows what I said? In the end of the verse, in Allah Tawabur Rahim. Allah accepts repentance. Ask Allah for forgiveness. Allah is merciful. And make dua for that person. If you don't remember who was it, say it, Ya Allah. Please forgive everybody that I backbite, everybody I said something negative about them. The beauty of our religion, Islam, is it not only brings the issues, even when they are negative, but it brings with it the, I call it as a physician, is the treatment. So let's all make a, a promise to ourselves, ask Allah to make it easy that we control our tongue and that what comes out of it is good and pleasing to Allah. Ya Rabbi Ameen.